Well, it's Tuesday, February 17th, and um, it took me a while to, well, very happy, actually, quite after it. Watched Celebrity Apprentice finale, I pretty much was sure that Gerardo Rivera was going to be the very best, being the final two. And I would have to admit that somehow Liza, I'm sorry, Lisa Gibbons slowly managed to remind me of the fact that, oh my goodness, this, you know, she's practically been on, I guess the only difference between her and fellow news Casarado is about, in terms of their careers, is probably about a decade. Oh crap, I should check on Wikipedia. But, um, needless to say, <coughs> You know, they're both newscasters. You couldn't deny her skill, one of her skills or talents is presentation. I tend to think now that maybe Bill Rancic, the very first Apprentice winner, encouraged her to try out for that version of Apprentice, considering they both work together on America Today. Um, but and um, yeah, I just I you know eventually managed to come around to it and thinking you know Lisa might Lisa could could Lisa win this? Should Lisa win this? And considering I mean considering the fact that you know um, Herodo's Teflon demeanor wasn't really. I figured that something like that was eventually going to catch up with him anyway. If, we, if he made, if, you know, if he at that point made it to the final three, I was kind of eager to see. Well, should it really be Vivica up against Gerardo instead? But you know, Vivica wanted to be. I guess she wanted to kind of follow her own sword, almost kind of similar to Lorenzo. But needless to say, I w don't know if I can find this out. But, um, I wonder when was the tweet that was sent from Vivica's twi a Twitter account on her smartphone. When was that sent? What was the date that that tweet was sent? Because I haven't been able to go back to her. I, you know, I haven't, I'm not going to really spend, you know, Googling the her Twitter page, or I should probably say, what's the back rolling, back rubbing, <laughs> just to go all the way back down and scroll down to find out. Oh, when, what date was that tweet sent? And for all I know, it was eventually deleted. But because um, I'm willing to bet that that incident, considering the fact that production on this show actually started back in the fall fall of 2013 and I think most of it was finished literally a year ago and you know Lisa and Geraldo had to somehow eventually wait nearly 365 days later to find out who okay we've waited the show was in the can this long and NBC was eventually going to have it in their time period in one of their time periods when we need to know so I'm willing to bet somehow that whatever date that tweet was sent, it was definitely before the live or the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Was it? Yeah, Kenya Morris of Atlanta uh, reunion, where Kenya and Phaedra were. I think yeah, they were both there live apparently with their well-adjusted props. I like to say the more mal-adjusted props in hand, at which point Kenya managed to just officially admit that she has embarrassed herself all in one hot minute. You know, a memory, a, a memory lapse of bad judgment. Because. Hmm. I can only imagine how far it'll, how long it'll be until hopefully I hope uh, Vivica winds up getting the tweet. I'm sorry, Vivica winds up getting the uh, deal with some phone company or 
probably creates an app that'll prevent anybody from you know like anybody else from taking your smartphone and maybe maybe it requires some sort of like fingerprint detection you know they'll know I mean I'm pretty sure there, yeah there should probably be now be an app on smartphones now where if they can sense just by your fingerprints who's touching the phone it can then automatically like I don't know shut down in five seconds all because it's not your fingerprints that are on file you know that'd be a great app or something to put on smartphones that could truly prevent a lot of ID theft and anyway um, I gotta look up. Let's see. When did um, Lisa Gibbons start? Okay, she's 57. Um, when did she actually start? Yeah. Yeah, she began on PM Magazine in Beaumont, Texas, before moving to FWFAA TV Channel 8 in Dallas, Fort Worth, during the early 80s. Um, when did she start E.T. and Extra? And of course, remember her daytime, her, her dedicated talk show with John. And then, of course, she was on her own. Hmm. I'm sorry. No, it was, the show wasn't called America Tonight. It's called America Now. It's called America Now. And I guess it's canceled. I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah, she's basically been doing TV since the early 80s. Uh... I guess same goes with Gerardo, but I think he, but his, um, yeah, he's, yeah, we have to remember, he's 71, a true patriot, actually, born on the 4th of July, um, yeah, he actually, yeah, I'm right, by about a decade. He was hired by WABC in 1970 as a reporter for Eyewitness News. So he's been doing this for... Yeah. Hold on. Oh my god, he reported John Lennon's murder on Night Nightline the day it happened. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, Gerardo and Lisa both had their own daytime talk shows. But I can honestly say that I didn't... Yeah, I... Oh no, I'm thinking of somebody else. Never mind. Now that I remember, he took his talk show in a different direction, much like Jerry Springer. Anyway. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, um, let's see. else is there to say about hmm. yesterday other than I don't know what's going on what's expected to happen today and I don't know what's really scheduled oh I do also want to quickly point out aside from the Celebrity Apprentice finale I did watch the two hour TV Stevie Wonder tribute special and I swear hands down the best performance for me seriously I, I can pretty much tell that this tape was taped 
after the Grammys were done live for the East Coast, odds are everybody's there just standing around, and they probably need to stay within their enclave for that extra hours or so. I mean, yes, news media on the will get, will give you live coverage from the East Coast before it officially airs on the West Coast. So you can find you can literally find out who won what before it officially airs on this side of the nation. But um, I, as I can pretty much tell, the Stevie Wonder tribute that was done literally, I guess it's like some sort of two-hour filler for everybody at, for everybody that was already there because they needed some some big primetime special. I mean, they had did something similar to this for the Beatles a year ago honoring their 50th anniversary performance on the Ed Sullivan Show. So, and I could pretty much figure out how and when it was done, of course. No. All right, we're, we're pretty much done. At, we're, we're done here at 8.30, but um, I don't, and I don't know what the contract said, other than they got about, probably, I don't know, technically another two hours, 25 minutes, something like that. And, um, it's enough time to get all these other performances and videos done in honor of Stevie Wonder, who, um, who well, I'll just pretty much say, um, that hands down the best performance of that event was Ed Sheeran's updated, literally 21st century version of I Was Made to Love Her. <laughs> um, I... I've now already tried to find it on Milan at YouTube, but I can find it as a live performance from a few years ago. I think he did it yeah, somewhere in Europe, I can't remember what country, probably, I want to say Copenhagen, or, you know, in terms of city. Um, I don't know what else to add today. Do all my videos have to be 50, approximately 15 minutes? Uh, what the hell, I'm at 12.22. Uh, actually, at the sound of the beep, I will have 2 minutes and 30 seconds left. Okay. Um. Oh, by the way, it was on this date in 1967 that um, the Beatles released the double A sided single in, their, in the United States with Penny Lane on one side and Strawberry Fields Forever on the other side. Of course, Penny Lane was written solely by Paul McCartney. Strawberry Fields Forever was just John Lennon. Um, it was also on this day in 1992 that Jeffrey Dahmer was sentenced to 15 consecutive life sentences and will never be eligible for parole by a Wisconsin court for practicing cannibalism and necrophilia on 15 young men and boys. And it was only about about two and a half years later, on the November 28, 1994, that he was murdered by a fellow inmate that bludgeoned him to death with a metal bar. Um, 11, yeah, 12 years ago this day, 21 people were killed in a stampede at the crowded Epitome nightclub in Chicago. Puccini's opera Madame Butterfly, which tells the story of an American sailor, B.F. Pinkerton, that married an abandoned young Japanese geisha named Koko-san. Or Madame Butterfly had its world premiere at La Scala in Milan, Italy. Yeah, on this day in 1911. Um, of course, today. Oh, I forgot to mention this. I feel like I should have subscribed by now. In its honor. Um, yeah, today is the 90th birthday of the New Yorker magazine. I wonder who was on the very first cover. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, it featured Dandy Eustace Tilly, created by Rhea Irvin. Um, yeah. Over a million subscribers in circulation. Oh, wait a minute. One website said today is their 19th anniversary, or 90th anniversary. Now I'm reading February 21st? <laughs> 